Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding and tech. Today we are going to be kind of crawling around under the vehicle and uh, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but uh, Oxfoot, go check out his channel. I'll link him down below. He did this really sweet and sort of slick install of his air compressor. And that's why I bought that Smittybilt air compressor a while back because I think it's so versatile. You can do this pretty cheap modification to mount it inside your engine bay if you really want to have onboard air, or you can just carry it around like a portable air compressor. So I was really pumped about that. Also, the air compressor is only like 160 bucks. The price kind of fluctuates on Amazon, but overall it's a pretty good deal considering I think the ARB air compressor is like $550. So I typically like to rep the brands that I like to support, but today we've just got on some old clothes because we're going to be crawling around. I'm also going to be installing a ARB differential breather kit. And these are really important if you're going to be driving through deeper water. I bought this kit back in March and I just haven't gotten the time to install it. And after driving through some pretty deep puddles with some of my buddies out in Colorado, uh, I knew I needed to install this. So I figured no better time to install the differential breather kit than when I'm gonna put in this mount for the Smittybilt air compressor. And so basically what I'm gonna be using is the C4 fabrication dual battery tray, which goes basically kitty corner to your battery in the fifth gen 4Runner. I think this install should be fairly quick and simple. Let's just lay everything out. I just wanna show you all the materials that I got for this install, and then we'll start getting going on uh, putting this all together. Oh, one last thing. If you think this video is gonna bring you any value or you like what you're hearing so far, please consider giving the video a like. Helps the channel out tremendously. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. Also, you may see me wearing the Spirit of 1876 hat fairly frequently. I also have a shirt from them. I've also got a C4 fabrication shirt. I love to wear those because supporting those brands really means a lot to me. They make incredible equipment and they sell good gear. And so uh, go check them out if you are looking for gear yourself, uh, especially the Spirit of 1876. They've got a super awesome shop in Colorado. And if you're looking to get a rooftop tent, they'll basically order it for you and then you can go there and they'll help you install it and everything. So uh, super awesome shop. I love that place and uh, I run a lot of C4 gear on my vehicle. I think they make some of the best 4Runner gear. So that being said, let's, uh, let's check out these materials and then let's hop right into the install. All right, so this install should be fairly straightforward. Let's just run through all the materials I have. So this is the little breather with an air filter on it. And then it comes with all this hose. I think we'll just use this for the rear differential. The front differential on the 4Runners has its own breather, I believe, so most people just do rear only. This is the hardware we need to install this little box. And then inside of this bag, we have some different valves for clipping the tubing in. And then we also have these little closing screws for the ports that we're not gonna use. Also comes with a ton of zip ties, so you can hook that hose up anywhere under the vehicle. And then for the actual battery install, this is the C4 battery tray for your dual battery setup, but we're just gonna be using this with the air compressor. I took this to a local powder coater and I got this and these two brackets powder coated, so that is something you'll have to do because it ships as bare metal. This is the hardware that we need to just basically hook this up to the vehicle. I don't think this is gonna have anything extra, but these big bolts right here, they go on either side, and then that's how we'll anchor this down. The C4 battery tray will feed right through the top of the air compressor and hold it down. Oxfoot made a really good recommendation in his video to use these rubber gaskets. So basically you can buy these slabs and cut them to fit for your situation. I just bought these from Home Depot but you can buy them anywhere. They're called rubber gasket sheets or something. And then obviously got the Smittybilt air compressor. So we got to do a little bit of prep on the air compressor to actually get it so that it will sit on here properly, uh, but that shouldn't take too much time. So let's, uh, let's work on getting the Smittybilt disassembled so that we can put it on the battery tray. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to remove these four bolts on the bottom. So I've started loosening them, and then uh, once they're fully loose, this will just pull right off. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so these each come with like all this different hardware so that the, 
these little rubber spacers can fit on there. I'm just gonna reassemble each one of these bolts because that way I can save the hardware if I ever wanna like go back and use these for something. But uh, I don't think we're gonna use these at all for the actual install. You can just set them aside. All right, now we need to remove these bolts from the bottom of this tray. So these are four Phillips, and I'm just gonna cheat and use a drill. And I think we gotta hold this side while we unscrew. These are really small, these are like a six. I'm just kidding, they're just a 10. I don't know what I was thinking. Those will spin if you don't hold them, so I was doing that wrong. Just hold it on one side and remove it. Now we're just gonna reattach these. Make sure to not over tighten them since they just hold in the rubber feet. There we go, they're all reattached. All right, I hope you can see this all right, but we're gonna just do some prep here. So this is a plastic washer back here we need to just remove. So I'm just using a pliers and loosening that. And then we've got to remove a couple of random wires. They're all 12s or 10s. This one is a 12. Okay, so this white, there's a little white um, clip release. You just pull that and then this super large cable unplugs. This we are going to route behind this harness so that it stays out of the way. So do that and then this white clip here on the bottom of this harness. You just need to remove it. So now just loosen this bolt down here enough so that you can rotate this little ground clip. Okay, so it's very hard to film, but basically I removed this right here, which was a metal bracket holding this clip and you need to run it behind this big like rubber tube or plastic tube of wiring and then I also reoriented this so this little tab used to be poking down through there and I loosened this reoriented it and then ran this big clip behind here so hopefully that's out of the way and then I just removed a black plastic clip that was on that nut right there and then I put on this bracket and it's just loose laying here We'll tighten everything up once we get the tray in here. So now let's put those long bolts on the tray. Okay, so I just wanna show, I've attached these two bolts and they go on the outside of those tabs and there's no washers or anything in between. There's no washers or anything in between. It's just these locking nuts. Put one on top, one on bottom. I put them as far down as I could go to be flush with these two pieces that are on the bottom of the tray like spacers so that's how far I went down I don't really want to cut these but I will if I absolutely have to I don't know if I'll run a dual battery in the future so I figure might as well just leave them leave them uncut like Oxfoot did so fully assembled now let's put this in the vehicle okay so once you get all of that removed there are two bolts that go on this side in factory areas I put WD-40 in those holes just to see if that would help put these bolts in a little bit easier. They were still kind of hard, but I live in Minnesota. We've got salt, so my car's got rust. So you put two smaller bolts here. These are both 10 millimeters. This one's 10, that one is also 10. And then down in there, those are both one half. And there's larger washers and larger nuts that go in there. And then in the back there, you're gonna rotate up that bracket. And that one, I believe, for size is a 9 16 So once you install all of those loosely, I would move it to right where you want it and then tighten her down. As you can see, 
I ran that white clipped large plug-in right behind there. So everything's tightened down. Now let's set the air compressor in here and just see how it looks and uh, cut a piece of rubber from the rubber gasket sheet to uh, fit on top of it. All right, so I placed it in the battery tray and when you're setting it in, you need to have this C4 piece already threaded through the handle. You're not gonna have enough space or clearance to be able to put it on after you set it in. So just remember that. This screw also can go slightly lower than when it's flush with that mount, like I stated before. The screw for that mount is raised a bit, so there's a little more clearance. So I moved this down about a quarter of an inch. And I didn't have really any troubles getting this in with this still this height. So that worked out fine for me. Um, I will say that this is kind of hard to tighten down. I used a long socket and then thread this through the socket. So if you can see my, my one half socket will fit over this. So I use this to hand tighten it as far as I could. And then the rest of the way, I just had to use your basic wrench and uh, turn it like a quarter turn and just keep on going. So I'm gonna zip tie this probably to this stem right here, just cause I think this can sometimes get hot and then run it along the front of here and probably put a, a valve plug in on this for a longer air hose than what comes with the Smitty Built. So this yellow hose is what comes with the Smitty Built and I'm just not sure if it'll reach every tire so I might have to get a longer heavier duty hose. Okay so the lighting is quite harsh but I just wanted to show that I got everything installed and everything routed. So this air tube here I zip tied to this post and then I ran it right along the air box here and just zip tied it using this little hole right there in the back. And then I put some tape over the end just because I don't want to get dirt down the tube. And then I also installed my differential breather right here. So there was enough space in between and I put the tube going out the bottom instead of on top. So these are two caps. There's a tube out the bottom and another one of these caps. I didn't really need to explain how to install this because Ben Stinnett or Stinnett, however you pronounce his last name, sorry if I butchered it, Ben. He's got a YouTube channel, I'll link him down below. He's got an awesome video on how to install this thing. Just go check that out. But basically you just route your hose all the way to the back of your rear differential. Your rear differential has a little stock breathing stem that sticks out the top. You take that out, you put in one that comes with the ARB kit. One of these bad boys. So take out the old one, stick this one in. Threads are the same. It's super straightforward. And then I ran the wire all the way across on the back. Here we go. And then I've just got the clips laying right here. I spread them apart so they wouldn't touch. And uh, they'll wire in to my Switch Pros once I get that all set up. So that should be coming shortly. Just to give a little demo here. That's gonna basically wrap up that install. Uh, I think it was a pretty simple mod, took a couple hours, but uh, overall I'm really happy with it and the money saved to have something functional here is, uh, is really helpful and, and kind of nice. If you like content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and press that notification bell so that you actually get notified when I post new videos. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.